Hi, today I am going to do something a little bit different because I've reached a point where I need to cut out the sky. Um, if you've been following my films you'll have seen me print the sky and then a shading on the sky and then a surprisingly speedy painting of a cloud on the sky. Um, and now I'm going to cut around that cloud. But first I just wanted to mention a couple of housekeeping things. So um, first of all the cloud that I'm cutting is here and one of the things that it's really easy to do when you're cutting is to kind of get lost in what you're doing and cut out the wrong bit and I've been guilty of this and I'm, you know it's a very common thing. So here I've got the cloud and it's coming around and there's lots of lovely shapes here to cut around except I don't want to cut around those bits and I know it sounds like idiot advice but just stick a bit of masking tape over a bit you don't want to cut and it'll just remind you not to cut it. I do that all the time just to protect the bits I need to stay safe. So that's the one thing. The other thing is that I'm going to be using um, this glamorous headwear while I'm cutting parts where it's detailed. This OptiVisor, and I can tell you it's OptiVisor because I am looking at it, it's an American make. Um, people have been asking me about these lenses and what magnification to get. Now the way we did it was to sit me down at the height that I work at when I'm cutting and actually measure the distance between my eyes and the cutting board in inches because it's American and then you can decide what lens you need based on the, the focal distance. Um, I wear very focal glasses and that system worked fine for me and the ones that we chose, um, I forget what the distance was, but this, this worked all right. So that's how we did it. Um, the lens has a number three on it, but that doesn't really mean anything to me. So that's, that's how we chose the Optivisor lens for this Optivisor that I wear. The other thing is that you might be able to see that I'm on a slope to cut this. Um, Mr B very kindly made me a sloping table to cut at because I have back problems and shoulder problems and it is much easier to use um, cutting on a slope. So that's kind of something I'd advise if you can. And again, if you missed it in one of the other films I talked about this, this is a non-slip cutting mat that I use. And it's just rug underlay. It's to stop uh, rugs sliding about the floor. So there, it's a very cheap product to, to get and it, it just holds everything steady. So I'm going to pop my visor on and I'm going to get cutting. And if I think of anything, I'll talk to you. Otherwise, we're just going to let you watch me work. And um, hopefully it'll be relaxing for you and not too stressy for me. So I'll get going and have fun watching. So this tool that I'm using is a tiny little V tool from the professional um, range of Japanese tools. If you watched my earlier film about um, choosing tools, this is, this is one of the Japanese professional ones. And I have to say, it's a lovely tool. It's a nightmare to sharpen and it's quite fragile, but it does do very fine cutting and makes it very easy. And I'm just following along the brush mark with it at the moment.
Now I've got some flecks of um, paint here and I need to decide whether I'm going to keep them or lose them. So I'm sort of constantly editing at the moment while I'm cutting. I'm not going to include every tiny little splash of paint simply because um, I may not need it. It's not that I don't want to cut it out, it's that I don't feel it adds to the cloud or the shapes that I want. So I'm I'm not just slavishly following what's there, I'm actually, as I go, deciding just what's worth including and what's not. So the tool I'm using at the moment belonged to um, Ben's grandfather and it's actually my favourite of his line of cutting tools and it's a, a wide V tool and it's very um, flexible because depending on what depth you put it into the lino you can vary the width of the cut that it makes and I quite like that. It's, it's very sturdy as well. That little professional Japanese VTOL that I was using just now is very delicate and it would be so easy to snap it if I used it in the wrong way. Whereas this one is, is nice and beefy and it will stand up to being manipulated. Hopefully you can see how the brittleness of the lino comes into play, so I can just flip it out with my finger as I go. So here I'm using the side of the V with a sort of, almost like a shimmy, to make a um, an uneven edge to my cutting as I go around this shape. So I'm just sort of swiveling the tool a little bit just to make the edge a slightly uneven one because what I don't want is anything to be too surgical. I want it to be kind of fluid. Clouds don't tend to have razor straight edges. Okay. Now here the cloud sort of gone the brush stroke has gone into nothing. So I need to make an edge to cut around. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty white china graph and I'm just going to go in and um, make myself an edge here. When I come to print this, it's going to be very, very ethereal and some bits are just going to disappear off into nothing, even though I've gone to the trouble of cutting them. So you have to, I'm sure I look mad in this, um, you have to appreciate that there are times when I, you, you might do a lot of very fiddly and beautiful cutting and then it barely shows on the finished result, but um, it kind of has to be there. So now I've decided on what line I'm taking, I can now go back with my little V and just play with that China graph line as a guide. Now, there are plenty of people who cut lino who would just do it freehand, and I do applaud them, but I like to have something to cut around. It's just the way that I work. Doesn't mean I always slavishly follow that line, but I like to have a guide. And you see how I'm always working away from the bit that's precious into the dead liner that's coming out.
So here I've got a series of sort of little U shapes in the paint. So I've swapped to a U shape tool because it's got the right profile for getting a nice smooth U shape. And as I'm coming out of that U shape, I'm just leaving tiny little bits of lino because there are a few little tiny splashes. And all the time that I'm refining where I'm cutting, I'm, I'm usually doing it with the edge of the tool rather than the whole tool. So I'll be using the side of the tool just to inch up closer and tidy bits up. And if you watch the video, um, I don't know which one it was, there were three cutting videos. And in one of them, I talk a lot about using the side of the tool to just um, ooch up to a line. And... Um, it's very useful because it puts you in control and you can slow down um, what you're doing and refine it without um, it being clumsy. So I use the side of the tool, I would say, at least as much as I use the centre part. Okay, so that's that little bit there. Now I'm going to go and take this big bit out um, to give you something else to look at. And you see, if I make a trench, you see this sort of very delicate little cut here and this little trench. I talked about making a trench around the delicate areas. It gives me something I can kind of hook that tool into to, to make the cut. So I can make that clearance cut without going too close to the delicate branch there. Okay. So this lovely big scoop, it's, I bought this in Japan. If you find yourself in Japan, um, there is a list of suppliers on my website or um, Japanese shops where you can go and buy lovely things like this. Um, but if you don't happen to be in Japan, we haven't got anything really like this in, in um, the UK that I've discovered. You may be able to prove me wrong, but I know that Shirley, who runs Hand Printed, the shop and school down in Bognor, is looking into stocking these and they are very good tools. So hopefully she'll be able to help with that fairly soon. I know she's looking into that at the moment. So now I've run those cuts, that's still not low enough. It's it's although it, it seems nice and flat, um, it's still a bit ridgy. So I'm just going to go back in and refine. Especially using this, this delicate paper, you have to be really careful about ridges because that paper is so um, so lightweight it tends to droop a bit more than a thicker paper and it would be easy for it to pick up and either emboss or pick up any random ink. So I'm being really careful 
just to go in and clear it out all the time. And the other thing I'm doing is just looking to see um, if I've got any little shelves of lino that's been cut away but is still a little bit high near the edge, say, of this branch here. And I'm just going back in and refining and taking, taking the lino out. So it's never a question of, uh, well, it's seldom a question of just making one cut and then it's deep enough and that's absolutely fine. I often find, like here, for example, I have to go back in and refine it because there's a little shelf that would pick up the, the ink possibly. So here you can see I'm actually burrowing out more lino. So I hope you enjoyed that sort of stream of consciousness while I was doing the cutting and do let me know in comments um, if you like that and you'd like to see more of me cutting as we progress with this lino cut and also um, I'm kind of I'm being asked questions and I'm trying to address them in the film so uh, do say if you've got questions in the comments bit of Facebook or Instagram or YouTube wherever you're seeing this and I'll try and cover them with the filming. So thank you for watching this and the next step will be a very transparent printing of this little cloud. So I hope you'll join me for that. Thanks a lot. Bye.